the West Coast. You know, the part of America that keeps Nevada from getting wet. Extreme wildfires have been devastating the region for over a week now. And as if the natural disaster isn't bad enough, it's being made worse by some serious human stupidity. Raging wildfires in California, Oregon, and Washington state are burning out of control at this hour. At least 35 people have died. Officials describe conditions as, quote, apocalyptic. As if the, the fatal, massive wildfires weren't enough to contend with, well, now officials in Oregon are having to plead with residents to ignore a QAnon conspiracy theory that is quickly spreading online. The false claim says Antifa is to blame for starting the fires. A Clackamas County Sheriff's deputy has been placed on leave after a video went viral of him falsely claiming that anti-fascists started fires in Oregon. Antifa mother okay. <laughs> right. are out causing hell. Right. And there's a lot of lives at stake and there's a lot of people's property at stake because these guys got some vendetta. Yeah. Not only do officials have to deal with wildfires, they also have to deal with the only thing that spreads faster than wildfires. Internet conspiracy theories, which let's be honest are the worst because at least fires eventually get put out. Internet conspiracy theories, man, they're harder to get rid of than those microchips that the government put in our brains using fluoride and impossible burgers. It's true, look it up. The only way we're gonna get rid of conspiracy theories is if we take away our uncle's Facebook. And good luck with that. Cause you try and take Facebook away from old people, they turn into Gollum from Lord of the Rings. My frenzies. And you know what really doesn't help in this situation is that while the sheriff's department is saying, don't believe the conspiracy theories, one of the sheriff's deputies is spreading the conspiracy theory. It's like if you saw Smokey Bear running around with a flamethrower. Well, now I don't know what to think. Now, since these fires are so big, California once again has been forced to rely on inmates to help fight the fires. And because these human beings are risking their lives to save others, the governor has finally decided to pay them back. Well, some inmate firefighters who are working the front lines on our California wildfires now have a chance to capitalize on that experience after they're released from custody. Governor Gavin Newsom signing into law what will give some inmates a shot at careers in firefighting after completing their sentences. Thousands of prisoners that are on the front lines uh, that are near the end of their time in prison that are getting credits uh, and want the opportunity because of the training they're receiving, this bill that I'm about to sign uh, will give those prisoners hope of actually getting a job in the profession that they've been trained. Yeah, for years. Even though prisoners fought wildfires while incarcerated, they weren't allowed to become professional firefighters once they were released. And that was all because of their felony convictions. And honestly, I think this is a great step in the right direction because America keeps telling people to take what they've learned in prison and use it to get back in society. If you learned how to fight fires in prison, you should be allowed to become a firefighter when you come out, right? If you've learned how to cook, you should be able to work in a restaurant when you come out. Even if you've spent all your time in prison just learning how to do more crime, when you get out, you should be allowed to get a job in the Trump campaign. And you know, I'm not surprised that prisoners actually make really good firefighters. Cause they don't mess around, man. On the first day, they walk up to the biggest fire and they put it out. And all the smaller fires know that they mean business. That's how it works, right? That's how you fight fires. <laughs> I wish there was someone here. But let's move on now to Florida, the state that's been doing the post-apocalypse thing for decades now. It may be hard to imagine, but there was a time in America when some people thought the biggest problem in the country was young black men with sagging pants. Looking like a fool with your pants on the ground. Ah, simpler times. But now, one city that had cracked down on this menace to society is having second thoughts. We begin with the city of Florida dropping his ban on saggy pants. For 13 years, anyone in Opelaka who was wearing pants that exposed their undergarments could be cited, but the city commission has now voted to overturn that controversial ordinance. Critics say the ban imposed overly harsh penalties and disproportionately affected young black men. That's right. A city in Florida has finally overturned a ridiculous law that banned people from wearing saggy pants. And I could not be happier for two reasons. One, the shit was obviously targeted at young black men. And two, it made it impossible to be a plumber in that town. Have you ever seen a plumber with these pants up? Still no one here? I'm gonna keep on trying. But seriously though, I'm glad that this law is gone because 
This basically made it illegal for black men to dress the way they wanted or white kids to dress like black men dress like the way that they wanted. Can you imagine if a city did the same thing, but only to white people? Imagine if a leader came out like, from now on, no wraparound Oakley sunglasses. If you ain't playing beach volleyball or stopping lasers from shooting out of your eyes, you take that shit off your face. Nobody needs sunglasses on the side of their face. What, the sun coming at you from the side, huh? Another reason I'm glad this law is gone is because this is another responsibility that cops just shouldn't have, right? Telling someone to pull up their pants is another job that police do not need to have. This is a job for grandmothers. I mean, they might as well make it illegal to look too skinny because you're not eating enough. Or have cops pulling people over because they have schmutz on their face. Sir, I'm gonna need you to hold still. Hold still, sir. Hold still so I can hold still. I just want people to see how beautiful you are. There, there, There you go. Outer space. It's the reason people who aren't perverts have telescopes. For years, scientists have been asking if there is life on Mars, but it turns out they may have been looking in the wrong place. Astronomers have uncovered possible new signs of life on Venus. Its surface is hot enough to melt lead and it's cloaked in clouds of toxic gas. But scientists now believe something could be alive on Venus or actually just above it. Professor Sara Seeger, along with a team of international scientists, spotted a molecule called phosphine in the planet's atmosphere using giant telescopes. Finding phosphine, it really leaves us with two equally crazy ideas. One is that there is some unknown chemistry. And the other one is that there's some possibility there might be some kind of life producing phosphine on Venus. Wow. Human beings are amazing. Just five months ago, we finally discovered how to properly wash our hands. And look at us. Now we're discovering extraterrestrial life. And I think it's super exciting that there's life on Venus. Because I've heard that's where all the ladies are from. Ooh, I can't wait to go to Venus. A planet full of only women? Oh, oh. I'm just gonna roll up there and be like, yo, ladies, can you give us some advice on building an egalitarian society based on mutuality free from patriarchy? You know, the one thing that often gets me is that we spend a lot of time trying to discover life on other planets. I feel like we don't spend any time figuring out what we're gonna do when we find life on other planets. Because I mean, given Earth's track record of explorers finding life on other planets they travel to, My advice to Venus is, run, girl! And of all the times to discover alien life, this is the worst time. Because what if the aliens come down to meet us and we give them coronavirus? They're gonna be so mad that we're gonna have to explain that it's not an act of war, but then they'll be like, yeah, but you guys knew you had it. Why didn't you wear a mask? And then we'll be like, well, that's kind of a weird thing that we have right now because of some stuff we read on Facebook. And they'll be like, wait, Facebook? So Zuckerberg is here? We wondered where he ended up. And we'd be like, wait, Zuckerberg's an alien? They'd be like, what, you thought he was a human? Wah! Even though discovering alien life is cool, please remember that our definition of alien life is very different from scientists' definition of alien life. Because in movies, it's always amazing creatures or futuristic aliens. I mean, if anything, they just set us up for disappointment, you know? Because, I mean, they said on Venus, they basically discovered what, like a bacteria? So what they need to start doing is making movies that set up more realistic expectations. The aliens are coming, everybody. Isn't it beautiful? They're gonna give us peace on Earth. Or maybe a new soda flavor. That'd be nice, right? (gasps) Something's coming out. That's it? I left my kids in the bath for this. Now, we better pray that aliens are really nice and welcoming to humans. Because at the rate climate change is going, we're gonna need a place to crash. Hurricane Sally is expected to make landfall as a Category 1 tomorrow, producing heavy rain and a potentially life-threatening storm surge. States of emergency have already been declared in Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. The slow-moving storm is packing winds around 100 miles per hour. It's expected to drop nearly two feet of rain. For only the second time in recorded history, five tropical cyclones are churning in the Atlantic at the same time. We're running out of letters to name them, so soon we'll be using the Greek alphabet for storm names. Welcome to 2020, people. 
where we've had so many hurricanes that now we're gonna start using the Greek alphabet. And then I guess after that, they're gonna go to colors. And after that, they're gonna have to get ideas from Elon Musk. Ah, it's Hurricane Xeon 7. How, how, do you, how do you pronounce the upside down G? And guys, you know what's crazy to me is that even though we're seeing the effects of climate change almost every day, there are still tons of people in this country who are like, I don't know if it's real. And even if it is, I'm not really afraid of it. But what's funny is those are the same people who are like, a Muslim family moved into my neighborhood? What is their secret plan? So maybe we just need to use that irrational fear to get people to take climate change seriously. Yeah, instead of naming them Hurricane Sally or Hurricane Diane, they should call it Hurricane Abdul Bashir Jalaluddin Bakhari. In 12 hours, America will be all vegan and everyone in NASCAR will drive a Prius. We gotta save this goddamn planet, yo! Speaking of which, there's another crisis engulfing the country that's even more directly tied to climate change, the West Coast wildfires. With less than 50 days until the election, President Trump and Joe Biden are clashing over climate change. While meeting with California's governor, the president downplayed the role of climate change in the wildfires ravaging the region. His Democratic rival blasted that attitude. Donald Trump, his climate denial may not have caused these fires and record floods and record hurricanes. If you give a climate arsonist four more years in the White House, why would anyone be surprised if we have more America blaze? We want to work with you to really recognize the changing climate and what it means to our forests and actually work together with that science. That science is going to be key because if we if we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians. Okay, it'll start getting cooler. <laughs> I you wish just, you just watch. Mr. President, you're right. It will start getting cooler. That's called winter, gold star. So I guess Trump's approach to climate change is the same as his approach to coronavirus. Just deny its existence and then hope it'll magically disappear which probably means six months from now, Bob Woodward is gonna release a tape where Trump is gonna be doing a detailed PowerPoint on carbon emissions impact on global temperatures. And this is why the solar flares that we're experiencing at a stratospheric level are so, hold on, Fox News. Ay, 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 But it's no wonder that Trump doesn't believe in science, people. The dude's been defying science his whole life. I mean, when science told him he couldn't subsist on a diet of fast food, meatloaf, and steak for 74 years, Trump was like, challenge accepted. Now, if you think that the president was at all embarrassed by that exchange, well, you clearly don't know Trump because rather than hiding in shame, he spent nearly an hour this morning chatting with his best friends on Fox News. And he obviously thought the interview went great, but something tells me that even they are wondering if they can keep this up for another four years. Mr. President, I think you broke a lot of news this morning. Thank you very much for starting your day with Fox and Friends. Thank you. Okay, it's been so, great. Thank we'll you We'll do it every much. week? We're gonna uh, do it yeah. every week? I look forward to it. Yeah, we're gonna do it every week. Every Monday, I think they said, and uh, if we can't do it on a Monday, we'll do it on a Tuesday like we did today. All Sounds right. good. Uh, Mr. President, okay. thank you very much. Uh, you may want to do it every week, but uh, Fox is not committed to that. We're going to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, Joe Biden, as well, is always welcome to uh, join us for 47 minutes, like we just did with the president. All right. Uh, Donald Trump, President of the United States. Wow. Steve Ducey just told the President of the United States, don't call us, we'll call you. Imagine that. He's the most powerful man in the world and they're treating him like he's a Jehovah's Witness who's also selling timeshares. And the fact that Ducey even knew that it was 47 minutes just shows you how annoyed he was. Not 45 minutes, not an hour, 47 minutes exactly. That's someone who spent most of a conversation staring at their watch. And by the way, if Melania ever wanted to have an affair, Trump's Fox News interviews would be the perfect time for her to do it. Okay, Eduardo. My husband just called into Fox now, so we have anywhere between 45 minutes and three hours to make called indifferent love. But still, man, I wanna give props to Steve Ducey for inviting Joe Biden on the show to make it seem like Fox and Friends is a balanced news show. That was pretty cool. Yeah, at the end, he was just like, just to be clear, we will also talk with Joe Biden. It's only fair. All right, coming up next, are Democrats gonna burn your house down while you're asleep? We'll discuss, but the answer is yes. Brianna Taylor. It has been six months now since the 26-year-old EMT was killed in her own apartment 
by Louisville police. And after months of protests in the streets, online, and at major sporting events, the city of Louisville has finally responded. A major development in the killing of Breonna Taylor. Attorneys for Taylor's family say they have reached a settlement with the city of Louisville, Kentucky. That settlement includes a financial agreement and police reforms. $12 million in a settlement, a civil settlement for Breonna Taylor, but the lawyers and the mom and everybody there making it clear that this fight is not over. They did announce, though, uh, that along with that civil settlement, there are a number of police reforms, including a housing credit for officers to live in low-income housing, to live in the communities that they police, creating a program to include social workers for assistance on police runs, commanding officer to review search warrants before the officer seeks a judicial warrant. Those are some pretty serious reforms for the police department. Okay, there's a lot going on right here, so let's try and break it down. In what might be a first, the city of Louisville has agreed to not just pay a settlement to Breonna Taylor's family, but also enact a number of police reforms to try and prevent something like this from happening ever again. For instance, from now on, a commanding officer has to attach their name to a search warrant before it goes to a judge, which hopefully means that they'll be more careful about which raids they approve, because now they can be held accountable. Also, every raid will now include paramedics, so that if someone does get shot, somebody is on hand to try and save their life, unlike what happened with Brianna Taylor, who was left on the ground for 20 minutes after being shot. Another reform is that officers will now be incentivized to live in the communities that they police, which is a step in the right direction, but I'll be honest with you, I can't believe that police are allowed to live outside the areas that they patrol. You know, you would think they'd have a vested interest if they police the places that they're from. You know, it's like the president not living in the country that he's in charge of, which I know technically Putin does with America, but you know what I'm saying. And obviously, a large part of the settlement is the $12 million paid to Breonna Taylor's family, which is a record for the most money Louisville has ever paid for police misconduct. But honestly, that's not really the type of records we want black people to be setting. And the thing that's also messed up about these settlements is that it's never paid by the police who did something wrong. It's paid by the city, which means taxpayers are being punished for the crimes that are committed against them, which I think we can all agree is some bullshit. I mean, if cops are guilty of misconduct, they should be responsible for the settlement you'd be a lot less likely to play fast and loose if you knew that you were risking your house. And as for the police department, this was a big step forward. But at the same time, guys, I don't think it should take the killing of an innocent person for police departments to make common sense reforms. They should be doing this on their own. You know, the time to install a smoke detector is not while your house is on fire. So yes, the city of Louisville has made moves to atone for what happened to Breonna Taylor. And in some ways, this is a victory. But really, the true victory will be when no more families have to get settlements for the loved ones that they've lost. Barbados, the place with a rich, beautiful history that you probably won't see because it's outside the Sandals Resort. Although the Caribbean island obtained independence in 1966, the Queen of England is still officially the head of state. But that's about to change. Queen Elizabeth is being removed as head of state in Barbados. The Caribbean nation plans to become a republic next year, 55 years after declaring independence from Britain. The island's governor general says the time has come to leave the colonial past behind. It'll be the first time in three decades the monarch has been removed. The queen is head of state in more than a dozen countries, formerly under British rule, including Australia, Canada, and Jamaica. Oh no. First Meghan Markle and now Barbados? The queen is losing all her black friends. And the question is, why now? I mean, did Barbados just get sick of the British? Or were Her Majesty's vacation cornrows the last straw? I thought she looked fly. You know who I feel really bad for though? Prince Charles. I mean, think about it. When he was born, he was set to inherit a massive global empire. By the time he finally takes over though, He'll basically just be ruling Seattle, but with a fancier accent. I mean, at this rate, the only Caribbean island that British royals will be welcome at is Jeffrey Epstein's. Either way, this was a lot easier than when America broke free from the British. I mean, they had a whole war. Barbados just basically ghosted the queen. Hello? 
Hello, Barbados, are you there? Hello? Shh, don't answer the phone. Rihanna's our queen now. Let's move on now to another country where people are desperate to rid themselves of a despotic monarch, the United States of America. One of the biggest clashes between protesters and police this summer was on June 1st, when federal police used tear gas, pepper spray, and batons to clear the park in front of the White House so that President Trump could hold a Bible in front of a church. I wanna show people that it doesn't burn my kind like they show in the movies. We can hold, we can hold it. But as overheated as that response was, we're now finding out that it could have been even hotter. A military whistleblower says federal officials sought to use a heat ray, which makes people's skin feel like it's burning, to deal with protesters outside the White House in June. Major Adam DeMarco told a House committee that a military police officer emailed him seeking an active denial system, also known as heat ray. The officer stated in his email, quote, the device provides a sensation of intense heat on the surface of the skin. DeMarco says he responded, saying the D.C. National Guard did not have the device. God! Damn, I can't believe this is real life. Federal police wanted to use a heat ray against peaceful protesters outside the White House. At this point, guys, can we admit Trump is essentially a real life Bond villain? He's already got the golden lair, an Eastern European girl in camo, and a creepy pet. Oh, and by the way, what a crazy way to learn that America's military has a heat ray. This is the same country that can't find money for veterans or healthcare or teachers, but somehow it has a giant microwave gun just lying around, you know, just in case we want a hot pocket the Middle East. And I will say, now that I know America has this weapon, I'm gonna wear that Lady Gaga meat dress to every protest I attend. Yeah, that way I'll be protected from the heat and I won't have to stress about making dinner. No justice, no peace. A little more well done on this side, please. Before we go, the West Coast is still currently battling some horrific wildfires that are destroying millions of acres of land and displacing thousands of people. Climate change has been a key factor in increasing the risk and the extent of these conditions. And one organization that has been working to find practical solutions for climate change is the Environmental Defense Fund. Now, if you can help them in any way, then please visit the link below and donate what you can.